When we were developing the AirTanks virus risk indicator and the algorithm that powers it, we leveraged a lot of scientific research papers and publications looking at how viruses transmit through the air and within our indoor environment. I had a very insightful conversation with one expert on this topic, um, which I think you find very interesting to listen into. From one home office to another, I have the great pleasure of being joined by Dr. Joe Hansen, a biologist, a science communicator, and host of the show, It's Okay to Be Smart. So we're about to geek out on the science behind airborne viruses. Happy to be here with you. Um, you know, this is such a, a critical time to make sure we're getting like, good scientific information out so people can make evidence-based decisions to keep ourselves and, and others safe. At AirThings, we want to empower people to create healthy buildings, uh, which I think is even more important now than ever. Uh, and especially as building owners and operators are grappling with how to manage and contain SARS-CoV-19. So let's start with the basics. How do respiratory viruses like these spread? So for a respiratory virus, it wants to get inside our nose, once it gets inside of our mouth, wants to be breathed in. And then again, for infected people, it wants to be breathed out and it wants to hang out in that space until it finds another new host to, be, to, to breathe it in. So when we're talking about SARS-CoV-2, we want to just minimize the amount of time that a virus can hang out in the air for a new host to come along and breathe it in. That's our main protection strategy. How do viruses actually spread throughout the air? So we're not breathing out just sort of naked virus. And these are very tiny particles, these viruses. We're talking you know, on the scale of billionths of a meter, which is, which is really so small that no one can intuitively understand that. But they actually don't leave our body alone. They're ejected in very, very tiny droplets of moisture. And this is where this sort of, what's an aerosol? What's a droplet? Uh, the, this distinction comes in. Um, a, a droplet is something that's maybe you know, over 300 millionths of a meter. Well, what does that mean? You, again, you can't really picture these things. You might be able to see it. It's sort of what you're picturing when maybe when somebody sneezes. Uh, these fall very quickly. They're heavy. So, you know, gravity pulls them down, they'll, they'll land on surfaces, and eventually sort of the viruses in them will dry out, become inactivated. That's primarily not what we're worried about with COVID-19 spread. What we're more uh, worried about is the aerosols. These are smaller particles. They're more on the scale of maybe a hundred millionths of a meter. And at that scale of droplets, uh, the physics really gets gets it's crazy and, and, and very non-intuitive because they don't fall. They're actually small enough that these tiny air currents in rooms from a door closing or uh, people's breath or a, a distant fan or just temperature differences can keep these things suspended in the air for very long periods of time, you know, potentially hours. And uh, it's the those particles can carry virus inside of them. And the more time that a person spends, if an infected person spends in that environment, breathing out these tiny particles, you're building up the concentration of that. How does the ventilation system come in here? How does that, uh, what role does it play to deal with these particles? Think of someone who's potentially infected with a virus as just constantly breathing out smoke. You know, you know pretend that they were, they were smoking cigarettes or something like that. Over time, what they're breathing out is going to build up in the room. Well, that's the same thing for viral particles, that the, you know, these, these aerosols that they're, that they're breathing out. Even when they're masked, this is building up over time. And even if you yourself are wearing a mask around that person, it is not a perfect um, protective device. Over time, you're increasing your risks. It's a concentration of air. If you could see it around you, it would be hanging in the air after hours like smoke particles. So ventilating that space, recycling new air out and getting rid of that buildup keeps whoever is in that room at a low risk level. What role does the environment that we foster inside our building uh, play in uh, managing, and I, I'm thinking particularly around temperature and humidity, what, what role do they play in, in managing the spread of diseases? What we've seen in experiments is, is warmer is bad for viruses, if they fall apart and become inactivated um, a little bit, a little bit quicker. Um, and then humidity levels, lower humidity, drier air can help those virus particles uh, remain viable a little bit more when sort of, sort of like putting something in the refrigerator. If, if someone's out there and they're responsible for managing or operating a building and ensuring a healthy indoor environment, um, what can they do to safely reopen 
their buildings or remain open. Well, if you know what the conditions are that are conducive, that make it more likely for viruses to survive and make it more likely for people in an, any particular space to get an infection, and you, if you know what those are, then you can study your space and you can see, you can minimize those factors in that space. So let's take having to be inside a bunch during the winter. Well, what's the risk factor really mean there? It means that you're in an enclosed space where virus could be building up. So then the solution is, all right, if we know that that's a risk factor, let's keep moving air through that space. Let's increase the ventilation. Well, if we know that keeping temperatures potentially warmer or more humid is this it can lower the risk well then you can change the environment you can change the climate control in that space to minimize the risk um, you can give people more breaks so they can get a little bit of sunlight or put sun lamps and there are you know, so many different things that you can do to sort of sort of, you know tick down these little risk factors so that the total risk in that space lowers itself but of course you need data to do that you need to know the space you need to know what is happening in that area so that you know what sort of dials to, to turn in order to minimize risk. Joe, it's been a great conversation. Uh, I've learned a lot about how we can manage the, the risk of uh, spreading viruses within our buildings and also how viruses spread and behave in the environment. So I think from all of us at AirThings and everyone that's uh, uh, listening to us, thank you so much for your time and for sharing the knowledge you have. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Uh, stay safe, everybody.